So in the last two years of owning a narrowboat and becoming continuous cruisers, we have not cruised a great deal. No, we bought a dud, but we are on a strict mission to undud this little bad boy. Two days after purchase, we discovered this humongous leak under the blimmin' floorboards, so this has turned into a complete restoration project, which was meant to last a couple of months, I think. But guess what? I'm terrible at DIY, so here we are two years later. But surprisingly, we are fast approaching our date to set sail. A couple of weeks ago we took the boat out for a spin for a little taster of what cruising life can be like and to check the batteries and this happened. So what better way to overcome that nightmare situation? Hi guys, we are the Nomadic Crowbot. I'm Chris. And I'm Bex. And we are out cruising again after all that chaos from the last episode. I mean, what better way to dust off those horrible little war wounds and just get out there again. This time, we are not cruising for a bruising. Here we go, round two. What better way to embrace the chaos of the crash but to get the boat out again. Yeah, it's knocked me confidence a bit. Let's get her out again, eh? We're gonna find a nice little spot, moor up. We're gonna finally have our team meeting where we discuss the next stage of what, the next steps of what we've got to do on the narrow boat because it's just getting silly now. We need to have a plan in place. It's very easy to fall into the habit of just doing little jobs here and there on the narrow boat and not really choosing the main job and, and prioritising that. So today we are on the mission of prioritisation and are feeding our greedy little baby here, Sopran Ella, named after the late great Tony Soprano, is at the top of the hit list. Sopran Ella's back, guys. She's so snatchy. Tearing into that. Like, <laughs> it's like me. I know. We like kindred spirits. Shit down. So here we go again, you ready for it? I am ready. Is the turbine going to suck us in like last time? Is it on? Did you check? It doesn't look on. How do you tell? Do we need to sort of check? It's risky, danger cruise. So we got sucked right into here where the turbine was in the last episode and had to wait 10 minutes while they turned it off so we could get out the marina. In this episode, we are certainly not going to try to replicate that. I mean, are we really doing this again? Showing you how we leave the marina. I mean, it, it's a tricky turn, so I tend to jump off on the pontoon over here. I've got the middle rope and I'm leaning back and I'm kind of pivoting the boat round. In the last episode, we just got sucked into the turbine, so I had to let go, but this time it's actually working. So I'm gonna jump on the boat now and hopefully we can continue the cruise together. Cruise, I mean, we've only been on the boat for about a minute at this point. And if you take a look down here, those blimmin' weeds are back, so it's really hard. The boat was actually getting stuck here. It's very weedy here, so at the minute it's like trying to wade through mud. It's going, but very slowly. You don't want to go into any of the other bo the boats, oh, do you? Yeah. That's, That's why I'm taking it slowly to try and position it. Yeah. So That'll be the next one, won't it? We just go piling into all the expensive cruisers. <laughs> Welcome to the channel. And then we got stuck. So guess what? I took over. I mean, build a whole vlog up around us leaving the marina. It's looking pretty good so far, isn't it? I just gave it a good old blast and by doing so, prayed that it wouldn't go flying into the cruisers that are parked up on the left here. Luckily, we got free. <sighs> I mean, it's, it's all luck really, isn't it? So as I was just coming out of the marina there, I noticed that the boat wasn't sort of responding like it normally would. And I first put it down to the, it being quite weedy in there, so obviously that causes a lot of drag and you don't sort of move in the same sort of way. I had a bit of a moment where I had the tiller right over, trying to direct myself to the right, and the boat just wasn't doing anything. So I just said to Chris, we'll pull in up here, there's a little spot, I'm just going to check in the weed hatch and make sure there's nothing at play. Tiller has started wobbling quite a bit, so we're wondering whether some damage might have been done in the crash, but fingers crossed that's not the case. I just tried the, the good old back and forth blast to 
just try and dislodge any weeds just before we reach our little spot up here and then I can have a look actually in the weed hatch. Again, I've uh, been cruising about 30 seconds here and we've got to pull over. Uh, welcome to us as a cruising narrowboat channel. And we're completely blagging it at this point, aren't we? We are not a cruising channel yet. Does that all seem all right? We were worried that something on the boat could have been damaged from when we got it stuck. It was extra shaky coming out of the marina and it is, it is very weedy there in fairness. We maybe just haven't given it a chance because we've just come out of the weedy area, but it's weird how it didn't, didn't want to respond to, to go in a certain way. A bit odd. It didn't feel quite right to me. No. Get right in, put your head under. So in she goes in her favourite little place. This is the weed hatch where the propeller lives. It's really wrapped around the crop. Oh, and bloody fishing wire as well. I don't know what that is. Feels weird. A load of fishing wire. Yeah, so there's quite a lot of weed coming off, so maybe that was the problem. Get right in. <laughs> Sorry, let's run that back. Bad joke, bad joke. Obviously, always make sure the keys are out of the ignition when someone's got their hands down in the weed hatch. I mean, that's, that's just obvious, isn't it? There's quite a lot wrapped around it. Hopefully you can see that in the video. Do my bit. Oh, you're all wet. It's okay, I can handle it. <laughs> Let me get that back on for you. Right. Teamwork. Right, let's get going. I think it feels better. It feels firmer and yeah. it's, it's definitely more responsive. So I guess it was just all that weed. So for anyone who experiences that sort of problem when you feel like your boat just isn't reacting, it's always worth just pulling over and checking your weed hatch because that might just be the problem. So let's get going, we're not going to go too far and just find a lovely little spot in the sun where we can pull a couple of chairs out, get the laptops out and start sort of really researching what the most important job is and prioritise that over everything so that we can get cruising. Because at the moment we've been messing around with solar, we've been messing around with the hot water, we've been messing around in the bilges, I mean we just need to find out and work out what the most important job is. Feel the panic coming. So we actually moored up here last year I think uh, when Bex had come back from a bushcraft course. The only problem is it's one of the hottest days of the year so far and it's in the shade. Ow. Ow. But we're hungry and we, we need some breakfast guys so let's moor up, have some brekkies and analyse the situation. Well done! because that's the beautiful thing about these boats, you can just get moving to a new spot if one isn't um, sunny enough. As you all well know by now, Bex loves, loves trying new weird things, so. I'm gonna pick some nettles to make some cordage. Oh yeah? The really cool person I am, yeah. Weirdo. See anything you like? Lots. <laughs> She's off. She's going. Here we go, the old industrial state again. It's always a joy to be back. It's a lovely, lovely little spot in the woods here, but it is right next to an industrial state. Can you see her? Who wants to see Beck sing later? See, here. You ready? La, 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 la. It's a spot of breakfast. It's a lovely sunny day and we've sort of positioned ourselves right in the shade, haven't we? It's far too hot to be sitting in the shade. We managed to wangle this lovely little spot in the sun down here. Again, get in the weeds. Check out the size of these koi carps, guys. That is humongous. It is so lovely to finally get away again and just chill and experience this lifestyle how it's meant to be. But we're here for one reason and one reason only, and that is to try and come up with a plan so that we can do this sort of every day. I mean, not just lie around in the sun every day, but to live the lifestyle every day. There it is. No, that's I've just seen a snake. I darted across here. I said to Bex, that ain't a snake. But then we checked the camera. 
you can see the scaliness. And his little head poking up above the water. And I was just photographing a duck. And then he came back and I saw him really clearly. He's just come into these reeds here, so I reckon he's looking for eggs to eat. Amazing, what an awesome thing to see. Hey, terrifying. This is like imagining like an anaconda's gonna like leap out. It's big. But not that was. What? Look at him, he's massive. He's not gonna eat him, is he? That's too big for it. I don't know. Thought spiders and, uh, and wasps were the problem. Now we're onto blooming snakes. <laughs> Caught the sun. <laughs> right! Let's get a snap one day, innit? A little bit drunk, had about three coronas. <laughs> Let's find some wood for the big blaze. The question is, are you ready to blaze? I'm always ready to blaze. We better start the old wood, wood collection then, don't we? Blaze, and you know what the blaze does? The blaze keeps the baddies away. Because they think you're a bit mad, don't they? They don't know who's there lighting fires in the wood. Very clever distraction technique. So, as, along with the big fat, big sticks, we need some thin ones to get it started because we're not going to like manage to start it with a tree trunk. So, this is what we're after. This sort of stuff. Little baby ones. Little baby ones. The shrine. I want to make some cordage. Um, lucky for me, there is an abundance of nettles around here because they, the fibres in their stems are perfect for it. So I'm going to go get picking so that it can be drying out ready to make some cord tomorrow. What are you going to use the cord for? I'm not really. I'm just <laughs> practicing. I'm just practicing the technique. It's like a bushcraft skill to have, so that mm. like if you need cord for some reason, like to build a shelter with or something like that you could use hey I could make us a rope for the boat it'll probably take me about 20 years but you know <laughs> I'm game He's, uh, back on the old nettles and you basically pull it out oh, I thought you were only meant to sort of pick up stuff that you you know has died not stuff that's still rooted and is alive well, no <laughs> with foraging you can take like 10% of what you can see is the accepted rule. So what you do is then you just run your hands down against the leaf so that you're left with the, oops, left with the stem. And that's what we're after. Illegal. It's not illegal. You could uh, make soup out of the nettles, couldn't you? Like nettles are one of like the absolute best things for you ever. They've got so many minerals and vitamins in. You can make teas, you can make juices, you can add them to salads. If you blanch them first so you don't get like a stingy salad tongue. Mm. You've thrown them on the floor. Yeah, but they're going to decompose and add nutrients to the earth. Off she goes, into the wilderness, hunting her nettles. And just when you thought you were safe from Becca's new nettle obsession. Another really cool, interesting fact about nettles is not only do they have like a stinging capability, but how clever is this? If you take a leaf, they really like squelch them up, release all their juice, rub that on your sting. Not only do stinging nettles have that stinging capability, but within them they have an enzyme. They're like a dual function sort of plant, so they heal as well as sting. So the best thing to rub, well maybe not the best thing, but something you can rub on a stinging nettle sting is a stinging nettle. How cool is that? Like a plant that not only can sting you, but if you use it in a different way, it can heal you from the sting that it's given you. That's, that's really cool, in my opinion. It is, isn't it? Yeah. Behold the nettle queen. Queen nettle. <laughs> mad, I'm telling you, she is mad. You look all let me have it. Start giving it some that way. <laughs> so back onto Becca's fire obsession. Yes, yeah, she loves burning things. This is probably illegal, but... No. Yeah, it's going all over me. I'm really embracing it. Oh, it's coming straight for me, man. Apparently there's an old myth, I think this is right, something to do with 
if the smoke directs itself at you from a fire like this, it means you haven't wiped your bum properly when you went to the toilet. What's wrong with her? What's wrong with her? Yeah, I mean, you look pretty, pretty close to that. I'd move up a bit. When should we get some food on there? I think we have to give it a bit longer because I wouldn't really put a pan on that, would you? <laughs> Got to get nice and hot and die down a bit first. How slow can you go before you go up? How slow can you go before you go up? I shouldn't be allowed near like, anything. <laughs> Yeah, I know, all a bit stupid really, but I think all those nettle fibres were in the air must have gone to me head. Becca's fault. So day two, and we really need to start researching and working out the next steps on the narrowboat. It's so hard to do anything when it's so lovely out here and peaceful and tranquil, and yeah, we really need to get our butts in gear, guys. So finally we managed to get some work done and try and work out the next steps for the narrowboat and uh, yeah, it's a blimmin' minefield out there. I mean, one thing just leads to another. Don't go too far in there. It's where the snake lives. What do you think would win out of the snake or, or the swan? I think the swan would probably win, wouldn't it? So we were starting to conclude that probably getting hot water on the narrowboat is possibly the most important thing right now. Yep, but that sparks the question if we're going to use the old Audi boiler, which supposedly uses up loads of gas, or to possibly install a new diesel type boiler. And it's working out what we can afford as well. <laughs> So I don't know about you guys, but let's hit another location. And we're gonna get Bex now to turn the boat round and we're just gonna head back a little bit. Yeah, it's about five minutes from the marina here, so we're gonna head back a couple of minutes and find a little spot. Can you guess what spot? She done good, didn't she? Like a few have been saying, just let Bex do all the driving. You know, that's, that seems to... I'm game with that. This is a lovely spot up here. You guys have got front, front row seats to this. This is amazing. But you've got to put up with me on the front, if that's all right. Yeah, we uh, pulled over here, if you remember, to check the weed hatch earlier in the episode. I mean, we are pushing new ground with this uh, cruising narrowboat channel business, aren't we, guys? What the hell is going on? Sorry. <laughs> no! <laughs> and for those that think it's uh, snowing on a sunny day here, this is some sort of pollen in the air. I mean, there is masses of it. So the beauty of boat life is doing stuff like this. We've got Chris outside on the gas cooker cooking up some chicken. I'm on the inside sorting out the salad and we're just like passing each other stuff through the window. The only way to mix these salad sauce. So hopefully a bit of dinner will get our minds in check so that we can start coming up with a proper conclusion of where to start next with the boat. Because at the moment it is not working guys. Huh, maybe that will help. And that. And that. I don't know what to do now. I'm under pressure. <laughs> Bex had an idea that she should sing you guys all the song. 
<laughs> Ring of fire. Fire. What else we got, Bex? Fire. Cause I'm on fire. <laughs> I don't know how that bit goes. Now she's walking through the clouds. With a circus man that's running. Butterflies and zebras and moonbeams and fairy tales. All she ever thinks about is riding with the wind. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> Another new day to try and work out exactly what we're going to do with the blimmin' narrow boat. Can you see where this is going? I mean, I've heard a couple of you in the comments say, get shot of it, go back to your normal jobs, but it's not something, it's not part of the plan. We uh, don't want to quit that quick. And especially when you're doing cheeky little narrow boat journeys like this and you get to experience what real narrow boat life is really like. Yep, this is what it's like. we have here is the UK's most dangerous animal, the false widow. We're gonna have to get him quick or he's gonna go. And he's gone. To wear me gloves all day. But we are gonna have something in place by the end of this episode, I'm telling you guys. Pictures, I think that's I feel bad because I think he was having his dinner. Where are you going to put him? Just put him a bit down over here. Extraction of the UK's most deadliest animal. That's how bad it gets in the UK. <laughs> and living on a boat, you're probably going to run into quite a few of them. Mm. Oh, she's back on the twigs, the old nettles. The nettle stems have dried out a bit now. I hope they haven't gotten too dry that it will still work. So I'm just going to try and prepare the, the fibres so we can make some cordage and I can practice like me bushcraft stuff, basically. You never know when you might need a bit of cord in an emergency situation. After you've flattened it all out and stuff, what you want to do is remove this kind of inner fleshy stuff because it's actually this that you're going to use for your material. It's really, really strong. And then we, uh, we set up a little stall and we sell, sell string, our own homemade string. That's what uh, narrow boaters do, isn't it? We're like proper narrow boaters now. This stuff is really strong. Like, that's so I Don't strong. break it. <laughs> it. It won't break, man. It is so strong. So the next thing is splitting it into strands, which I'll roll like you do when you're making rope. Make a little loop at the top. And then what, what you do basically is twist, fold over, twist, fold over. So it's a bit like when you see with rope, like the fibers just cut into each other and sort of, and you end up with something like that. And then as it dries, it'll look like rope. Etsy, here we come. So what I love about it is like, you know, once upon a time, before sort of synthetic materials and stuff, like this is what people would use. They'd harness stuff from nature to make what they needed because it's really durable, it's really environmental, it's strong. So much about nature that's kind of been lost. Like, 
you know, these kind of art forms and this knowledge that I want to try and keep alive, like, along with lots of other people who are trying to do that. So, and if you want a thicker bit of cord, what you would then do is then combine your three strands, or however many strands you've made, using the same twisting technique, which is what I'm going to do now. Lady of String! I mean, that's not going anywhere. That's so tough. Yeah. You could use that to tie down a shelter. Cool natural fibres, man. <laughs> <laughs> you can even make a fashion bracelet for your friends. Well, I definitely won't be getting it then. <laughs> I just want to take this moment to say thank you so much to all our subscribers and our non-subscribers. We've had a hell of a lot of people that aren't subscribed to the channel also watching the videos. It's completely free to subscribe to the channel. You just click on the bottom right of the screen, I think, and all it does is support the channel, really. So we'd really appreciate that guys cheers so let's get back to the marina I'm a, I'm a little bit nervous after everything that's happened and then we can let you know our next steps of what we want to do with the narrow boat so again we blast through we're going about 50 miles an hour here to the top left corner of the marina and then we just swing the background and hopefully pray that it slides nicely back into where its little home is yeah I swear a lot of this is luck and guesswork there is no way I'm doing this uh, because I'm, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> but we learn every step of the way, the good and the bad. A successful trip-ish, I think. We always do all right when we come in, don't we? <laughs> it's everything else. Has that boosted your confidence a bit? I was a little bit sort of nervous coming in, even though I know I've always managed to do it quite well, the sort of turning into the marina. But yeah, after the little wallop the other week, I do feel a bit, a bit nervous now. I think I'm just gonna, there's a little bird that's got its nest just as you come in and I'll have visions of myself ploughing into it, you know. Oh, well you did really well. So we'll get there, we'll get there, won't we? So we're all learning. Okay guys, so the moment you've all been waiting for, that exciting time, where are Crowbot gonna go next with the boat? What conclusions have they concluded over the course of this episode? What? <laughs> <laughs> what what have we concluded, Bex? <sighs> After all that research and everything that we've done. So, what have we concluded, put in a concise little sentence? <laughs> One, that the boiler needs to come first because we can't progress in any rooms in the boat without having that in first because it would mean ripping everything out to access the pipework otherwise basically so we've concluded that we are at a standstill for that very reason we have to decide whether we're keeping this bad boy behind us the aldi boiler or whilst everything's ripped out it's the perfect time to think about installing something different first conclusion that's it second conclusion oh yeah what is the second conclusion <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think, yeah. ah so second conclusion that we needed to just go out and gather as much information as we as we could to be able to make an informed decision. So we've spent the weekend researching, contacting different marine sort of heating engineers and stuff, of which there are not many. So if any knows of any around the sort of southeast region, please shout. Um, and we're just going to pull together all that information so that we can actually sit down and go, you know what, this this one seems right for us. Yes. It basically comes down to sort of three options. If you go gas, diesel, or if you go something like a back burner with your stove. Like we're really just... Back boiler. What did I say? Back burner. Back burner. <laughs> Corrected by me. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, a back boiler. But we've kind of narrowed it down. It's either going to be stick with our old gas boiler or upgrade it to a more efficient model or go the diesel route with something like a Wabasto or an Eber spatula. So yeah, if you've got any ideas what you think we should do, we'd love to hear it in the comments down below because we are pretty much clueless right now. Conclusion three is that we never really concluded what we went out to conclude in this episode. But yeah. that's a... Conclusion number three. Conclusions aren't, are rarely conclusive. <laughs> In a Crowbot episode. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, guys, cheers for sticking up with us. We are going to go cruising. We, it is going to happen. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys. Bye.